Boom! How's about that for technology? That's a bit better than last week. Welcome to my second STB Live, your Sunday night. Bit of fun, bit of cocktail banter. Uh, if you're watching this, better get this out of the way. If you're watching this uh, the replay on YouTube uh, on Monday, then I will have edited this and put in the chapters so you can jump to the cocktails that you want to see uh, and just get involved in the bits and bobs that I'm going to talk about. What is coming up in today's show? Well, 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 there we go. We are doing rum. Rum is one of my favourite uh, sort of t categories, cocktails to kind of talk about and show. Rum is me, as you can see, I'm always in this sort of shirt when I'm filming uh, videos and things like that. R I love, absolutely love rum. So we're going to be doing some sort of rum cocktails uh, today. We're going sort of into tiki as well. Uh, I'm going to be rolling out two or three uh, decent tiki cocktails for you. But um, as always, you know, my thing is I want you guys to be able to recreate um, awesome banging drinks uh, at home for yourself. So tiki is this weird and wonderful and vibrant and colourful kind of category, uh, kind of slightly different sort of rum cocktails in a way. Um, but a lot of bars that roll it out, uh, if you're in London, go and check out uh, like Lackey Cane, Trailer Happiness, uh, places like that. They take, take tiki to a whole new level because they're just phenomenal. Fresh ingredients. Uh, it's all about the colour. Big, bold, uh, flamboyant garnishes. All the kind of spices. It is just a completely different level. But as always, I'm going to sort of dumb it down uh, for you a little bit because uh, you won't be able to get hold of quite a few of the ingredients that these bars use. Um, so that is kind of what tonight's show is all about. Uh, the cocktails I'm going to make you for you, I'm going to start off with the daiquiri because obviously the daiquiri is kind of like critical, turn it off, um, to the rum cocktail world. You know, if you can't make a good daiquiri, you're going to fail at most rum cocktails. So I'm going to start off with uh, the daiquiri and then I'm going to show you my kind of fruity flip on a daiquiri. It's my go-to recipe. I don't rock it out too often, but it's absolutely amazing. Uh, we're then going to go into the hurricane, which is definitely a fun and fruity kind of drink. Uh, we're going to go into the Mai Tai, which is my all-time uh, favourite cocktail. Absolutely love the Mai Tai. Uh, I'm going to be doing a rum punch for you. Uh, kind of old school, traditional, minimal flavours, but I'm going to be talking to you about what the whole rum punch sort of thing is and the formula that you need to follow. We're going to be doing the Nui Nui, uh, which is a very much uh, a tiki cocktail. And we're going to be doing the Rum Runner to finish off with. So there's actually going to be seven cocktails in there tonight. Uh, so I'm going to go through them. Of course, I'm going to have banter from you guys as well. I haven't got the chat open yet, so I don't know who's in there. I've got no idea. I'm trying to stay away from the chat for the first bit, and then we'll dive into the chat. We'll get some questions going. We'll have some banter, and we'll have some fun. The brands that I'm going to use, I'm just looking in my screen. They're kind of. I'm not going Dead Man's Fingers tonight. No, I'm not going Dead Man's Fingers. I'm going Ron Kube and um, the Lovers Run, brand new. Uh, rum to my stables, brand new rum to the UK as well, sort of. Uh, let's hold that up there for you. Uh, and this is amazing. You, you can see I've had a little pull of that already. That's lovely. So we're going kind of proper rums uh, tonight. But just to start off with, um, because I've done a lot of spiced rum reviews and things like that for you, I just want to give you the very, very basics and kind of some go-to brands um, that I think you should kind of start off with. If you're not massively into your rums, then these might kind of not be your palate. Um, but your so spiced rums are they're a little bit sweeter. They've got flavours to them. Uh, so a lot of people start off with spiced rums, and that's cool. Um, so a few brands that I just want to kind of very, very quickly show you. Obviously, Black Tears. Absolutely love that as a spiced rum. Amazing. Uh, and obviously the Dead Man's Fingers as well. I talk about DMF a lot on my channel, so no introduction there. But they've got other rums for you to try as well. So if we're going sort of classic sort of spiced rums for your cocktails, uh, these are the three I'd start off with. Absolutely kind of oh, need to hold these up for you. Get, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that off there for now. Um, so Bayou, absolutely love Bayou. It's a spiced rum, rum bullion and Chairman's Reserve Spiced. They kind of need no introduction. And then we're kind of going on to other weird and wonderful flavors as well. Um, let's go for these three. To... Next, got kind of a coffee rum there, Rum Java, Chris, Rum Ting, Banging, uh, Passion Fruit Mango, Elderflower, 40%, uh, 42%, I think this is 42.5% ABV. And then we've got, oh, 
you can't not have a bit of Belgrove in your life. Kind of Nutella and rum. Oh, amazing. Sort of chocolate, hazelnut vibes. They're really good to make cocktails. And then the last three, the quirky three that I'm going for as well. All a bit different here. All a bit different. Aldi's. Aldi's crossbones. Where are we going? That way. Tropical rum. Amazing. Kind of pineapple vibes. 15 quid a bottle. Absolutely lovely. Uh, Karasimbi. Orange. Ginger kind of rum as well. And then Jamaica Clove, if you like me and love a bit of ginger, uh, Jamaica Clove is brilliant as well. So have a look out for those. If your palate is not quite there yet on proper out and out rums, do check out uh, some spiced rums, get involved in them. And then you'll be you'll be well away. Mixer wise though, yes, you've got Coke and ginger beer, but I'm all about giving you guys inspiration. So I've got some mixes here just to quickly show you. The first one, Fever Tree Spiced Orange Ginger Ale. Been around now for a long, long time, but people still don't really know about it. Uh, nice, subtle orange notes as a ginger ale. Fantastic. Uh, let's leave that one till last. Uh, Rubicon. I need to put the labels around the right way. There we go. Rubicon. These are the fizzy, sparkling ones. Brilliant for fun, fruity rum drinks. Absolutely lovely. Uh, opposite ends of the spectrum here. I haven't got any lilt, uh, but put these two together and you've got a lilt. But we've got pineapple soda there and ting, which is a grapefruit soda. So lilt without the grapefruit, lilt without the pineapple. Amazing. And then my last one, my favorite, favorite one. Good old Levi Roots. And I haven't got another one. I was looking. No, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't got another, he's got another uh, sort of Ralph, I completely forget what it's called now, it's got a bit of chilli, coconut kick in it as well, but this is essentially lilt with mango in it as well, so uh, pineapple, grapefruit and a bit of mango. If you just want simple rum cocktails, rum and mixers, that is without a shadow of a doubt your way forward, but tonight we're going cocktails, uh, and tonight we are going to have a bit of fun, so let's, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to open up the chat. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Who have we got straight away then? Claire Fryett. Hello, Claire. Hello, Mark. Good banter earlier. I hope you, hope you told your missus off earlier, Mark. Uh, Holly, Graham, Hugh from Dublin. Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Freshly picked blackberries. Oh, hello. Uh, Alexi. Hello, Alexi. Who else have we got in here? Edmund. Oh, just he's watching. He's watching. That's his run. Go and get involved in that. Amazing, amazing run. Uh, who else have we got in here? Right. Drew. Hello, Drew. Oh, the whole Fryat family's in here as well. Cuz. Hello, Cuz. And Mr. Cundy. There's a blast from the past. Hello, my old friend. Right. I'll have a look at the actual comments uh, a bit later, but I just want to dive in to cocktail time. So we'll, I will go back. I'll scroll through the questions and the comments and all that. Um, but there we go. So I want to crack on with the first, first cocktail, the daiquiri. This is the go-to. If you're ever in a cocktail bar environment, this is pretty much one of the first cocktails that you need to know and need to know how to make very well. Um, it's all about ratios. That is all the daiquiri is at the end of the day. Uh, it kind of is the base to most cocktails. It also is, is rum, sugar, and lime. Very, very simple, but you can take that on a whole different level. You can use different rums, uh, you can add bitters into it, different sugars, uh, but a classic, classic daiquiri. Uh, the traditional uh, ratio is four to one or two one half. So four parts rum, two parts uh, lime, one part sugar. Now, a lot of people will have different palates, and I say this time and time again, but the best way to describe it, if you're a person that takes uh, a couple of sugars in your tea and coffee, then you might need sweeter drinks. If you're sort of the person that doesn't uh, have sugar in your tea and coffee, then you probably won't want it sweet. So don't take these recipes as gospel. Rec cocktail recipes are all about uh, trial and error, just to your personal taste. But I'm going to give you the base recipes, uh, which my palate has sort of become accustomed to over the years. I did have a very sweet tooth. It's been dialed back now in the last sort of five or six years. I've still got a sweet tooth, don't get me wrong, but it's not as sweet as what it used to. So first ingredient I'm going to go for, this. This is the first rum I'm going to play about with. Uh, brand new-ish to the UK. Uh, this is actually a blended in in uh, Holland, but the rums in this, so this is uh, marketed and touted as the world's best daiquiri rum. Whether it is or not, we'll find out. 
it's pretty good because I've already had a play. But we've got rums from Barbados, Dominican Republic, Guatemala, Nicaragua, and Panama. So phenomenal rum. So let's crack on. First cocktail, easy, easy, simple, easy to make. To make. I'm just going to ice my glass down. Nick and Nora glass. Uh, so that's nicely chilling away. So right, four parts. So I'm going double measure of my tiki lovers rum. Uh, and then I'm going for some freshly squeezed lime juice. Which one is it? I've got lemon and lime. That's my lime, that one. Make it complicated. I've got pineapple as well, which looks identical. Right, lime juice. I'm going, so I've had, got a double measure of rum. I've got a single measure coming up now of lime juice. And then I just want sort of half a shot, 15 mil-ish of um, sugar. All right, just plain old sugar syrup. So 15 mil. So it kind of makes the four to one ratio, two, one half, whichever way you want to call it. Now, ice, just going to shake this down. Now, as I'm going to drink this, I do love adding bitters uh, to my drinks as well. And for me, this is the ultimate uh, daiquiri bitters rum. This is, I'll see if I can hold it up close and get it focused. I've got it locked at the moment, so you might not be able to see it now, right? That is Miss Better's Bitters, but it's pineapple and star anise. And these are amazing, just to bring out some quality flavors. So just, let's get that so you can see it. Can you see it there? You just need about a third to a quarter of a pet. And there's loads of bitters. I'm gonna use a few more in there tonight as well, but absolutely delicious. Right. Hard and fast shake. This is all about the fresh lime juice. It's all about the rum. It is the best way. Daiquiris are the best way to drink rum by a million, million miles. All right. So hard and fast shake. There we go. Right. Leave that to one side. Now, just going to uh, double strain this, actually. I'm not going to worry about garnishing. You could garnish that with a lime wedge, lime peel, whatever you fancied. That lime wheel, that is pretty straightforward daiquiri. Cool, refreshing, sitting by the beach. I need my notes, where are we go. There we go, sitting by the beach, just Delicious, delicious, delicious. So that is the bog standard daiquiri. What I'm going to show you now, before I dive it back into the comments and have some banter with you all, I'm going to show you my uh, kind of fun and fruity daiquiri. So um, let's go for that glass. Let's ice this up again. This has got a bit of fresh fruit in it, uh, sorry, a bit of puree in it. And um, we've got another kind of tiki ingredient that I want to talk to you about as well. So this is absolutely delicious. Right, again, I'm going double bubble of this rum, 50 mil. If any of you have actually tried this rum, um, what do you think to it? Let me know. I really, really like it. It's really super smooth. I'm drinking it. Shh, drinking it. Amazing. Right, so I've got double bubble. Of, uh, of that rum. The next ingredient, kind of had a little move around just for there, is falernum. Now, falernum, uh, I don't honestly know too much about falernum. All I know is that it's a Caribbean ingredient. It's kind of the alcoholic version of orgy. So it's got ginger. I, apparently, islands in the Caribbean have completely different recipes for their own. So this is Barbados. Um, so you get probably bits of ginger, almond, uh, lime in there. Um, Clothes, allspice, that kind of thing. It's only it's only eleven percent, but it just really sort of brings out those kind of flavours that you kind of associate with tiki drinks. So I'm just going fifteen mil. Yeah, one five of that. Get that quite easily online. Super lovely, jubbly, proper, 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 proper. Mm. Right, uh, lime juice. That's the next one. So going to, uh, twenty mil of lime juice. And then my sugar comes in two forms. Now, if any of you watch my uh, YouTube videos, 
which I know of you, a lot of you do, because I've seen I've seen your names pop up. Uh, I do love to use purees, and I do love to use um, shelf stable purees as well, because they keep once open for months and months and months. Uh, you don't have to use them within sort of five to seven days. They're just brilliant for weekend cocktails, if you like, or if you're a pub or a bar and you sort of only make a few handful of cocktails through the week, they're just ideal for that. So, um, two cocktails, two purees I'm going for. I'm going for pineapple. And I'm going for passion fruit. All right. And this is makes up my kind of sugar because, the, as, as I say, these are shelf stable. So they've got a tiny bit of sugar element in there as well to them. So I just want 10 mil of passion fruit. And then I just want uh, 15 mil of uh, pineapple. You could use juice if you really wanted to, but puree's intense flavor, pack a punch. Right, so 15 mil of pineapple. Right, uh, I'm not going any bitters in this. You could use bitters if you really wanted to. I'm not gonna bother. So I'm just gonna shake this down. Uh, again, hard and fast shake for about 10, 12 seconds. There we go, lovely juggly. Right, I'll tell you what, it's flipping hot in here. <laughs> right, double strain this again. You could serve it up in a sort of tumbler, rocks glass over ice if you really wanted to. There's that. Need to give that a rinse out in a second. And then just the garnish. And there we have it. That is my kind of daiquiri. That's what I love to drink, sort of pineapple, bit of passion fruit in there, along with that kind of citrus. Oh. Oh. That is so good. Mm. So that's what you can do with the daiquiri. You can have some fun with it. The strawberry daiquiri is fine. Well, strawberry daiquiri is just that with either muddled strawberries or strawberry puree. Frozen daiquiris when they, when you blend them up, but that is essentially a daiquiri. For, remember that ratio: four to one, four parts rum, two parts lime, one part sugar. You can have so much fun. So that's the first cocktail to get your head around in the whole rum world. Obviously, a mojito is just that with mint and soda. Easy peasy, right? What have I let myself in for here in the chat? Let's go back and have a look. Right, let's go right back to the start. Right, Claire. Hey, Claire. Where do we go? Luke, there's some questions here. Right, Hugh Daly, live from Dublin. Hello, Dublin. Kevin, here we go. Right, let's, let's make you famous. Kevin, any suggestions for using freshly picked blackberries, especially as in season at the moment? Oh, I did a video the other day with Jack Daniels. Lights on it. Jack Daniels apple. Uh... Jack Daniels, Tennessee Fire, sort of cinnamon. They kind of work really well with blackberry. Um, obviously gin as well, muddle it down. Kind of blackberry is the, um, the base ingredient, well, one of the finishing ingredients for a bramble. Just muddle them down, make a little puree. Gin, vodka, oh, lovely. Right, uh, who else have we got in here? Uh, seven cocktails, woohoo! Amy Painter, hello, Amy. Give you five minutes of fame. Just until I found, <laughs> where's the parrot tiki mug? It is, I don't know. I don't know, Mark, I don't know. I've lost it. Edmund, right. Love the Aldi rum. We bought that, yes. It's great, 15 quid, absolute bargain that is. Drew, what's Drew got to say? Have you seen the screw? Screwball peanut butter whiskey? No, is your answer to that? No, I haven't seen that. Screwball peanut butter with I don't really like peanut butter, so I might give that one a miss. Claire, we have three large bottles of Levi Roots. Yes, they're so good, isn't it? It's so good with rum. Cousin Mandy, give her some love. If any else of you are in the, in the, uh, America, man's in Georgia, Atlanta, just outside. Uh, right. 
That's one hell of a run. What that, Alexi? Have you tried that? <laughs> Mr. Tucker, how are you? How are you? Right. What else? Penty Lake. So, oh, hello, mate. How are you? We got any questions in here? Everyone's just saying hello. Need some aircon? Yes, I flipping well do. I wonder. I wonder who's going to sort me out some aircon. Uh, any cocktails with limoncello? Filmed yesterday in this sweat box. Uh, limoncello. When's that going live? It'll be Thursday, Friday next week. I did a limoncello and with an orgite froth. Oh, that's good. Sort of a lemon meringue pie kind of thing, mate. Uh, Andy Howitt, where's the Masons? No one sent me any Masons. Funny that, Carl, you know, Carl, I keep asking Carl, but he never sends me any. Uh, <laughs> I've got a bottle of pear and ginger. Uh, uh, spiced pear somewhere, mate. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have to rock that out. Uh, what's this? How do you become pen... Alex, I don't know what that means, mate. How do you become pen -trant? Don't know what that means. Someone translate that for me. Right. And the last one, last one, loving the work. Where's the best place to get Levi Roots from? If you've got a book of cash and carry from uh, near you, you can get 12 or macro, you can get 12 packs. Um, and that's where, where'd I put it? Because that's where they obviously come from, from the local shop, because they sell them at a quid. <laughs> so they were obviously making a profit on that. Uh, failing that, get them from the um get them from the uh, your local shop village shop spa shop and all that because that's why cash and carry sell them so you can always get that patreon oh hang on patreon maybe how do you become a patreon ah oh, nice there's a good link there's a good link that's how you become a patreon i was going to talk about that a bit level a bit later i've started my um cheers mm. Uh, it's about three months old now. I've started my Patreon, my membership uh, group in there. I have actually got some cool plans in there. Basically, every month in my, or every week in my Patreon, uh, you get a simple serve PDF to download for the weekend. So I take one spirit, give you four different simple serves. Um, every month, you get my updated cocktail book. Uh, so it's, you always get the free one in any of my comments on any of my videos. So download the free one, completely free of charge. Uh, but you get the upgraded version, the updated one. And I add at least 10, if not 12 uh, recipes every single month. So it's grown and grown and grown. And I'm slowly transitioning all my online courses uh, dedicated to pubs and bars, dedicated to helping people bartenders make more money behind the, the bar, uh, earn more tips, get promotion, all that sort of stuff. My mobile bar, how to start a mobile bar. Slowly, it's long, because I'm little old me on my own. It's, uh, it's slow work, but I'm steadily transitioning all those sort of stuff into my Patreon as well. So it's my membership only tier. And um, I did, Alexi, I have to give you credit for this because, and, I, and I'll give you a free perk, don't worry. Um, Alexi said to me, and this is SCP, uh, I've got rid of the chat, SCP-09, is it, I think? I'll, get, I'll look at the chat again. Uh, Alexi said to me, how about do a feature where you make um, sort of viewers cocktails? And I thought, that probably won't go down so well in a, uh, a video that I upload to YouTube, but it will go down really well in a live session. So what I'm going to start doing uh, through the autumn, winter months is I'm going to ask my Patreons to sub, sort of submit cocktail recipes, and then once a month in these live shows, I'm going to I'm going to make your cocktail recipes live on screen. So that uh, that'll be fun. So that's my Patreon. Anyway, buy my stuff. <laughs> right, cocktail two, cocktail two. I love cocktail number two. Also love the daiquiri. Cocktail number two is the hurricane. Just excuse me while I wash this down. Um. Hurricane is a fun, fruity, innocent. Uh, it's so easy to make cocktail. Sort of three ingredients, really. Um, sort of passion fruit base as well. Uh, it's just absolutely delicious. So there we go. All washed down. I need, I need a, need a bar back. That's what I need. I need a bar back. Haven't got much room for someone to be a bar back, but I do kind of need a bar back for some people to wash up. Right. 
and some aircon. <laughs> right, which rum am I going to use? I've forgotten which rum I'm using for the, I think I know which rum I'm using. Yeah, I thought I did. I thought I did. Right. I'm going wrong Kube for this one. This is Añejo, five-year-old, five-year-old. I did well because it's all in Spanish on the back. Uh, five-year-old sort of golden aged rum, um, Cuban rum, delicious, kind of that Spanish sort of style of rum to it. Uh, traditionally, I do kind of like the English style of rum, but there's something about uh, these, especially this one, which I'm going to come on to in a bit. This is absolutely gorgeous. Spin it around that way. Uh, Año Suave, excuse my Spanish, aged in sherry barrels. Oh, <laughs> so, so good. Right. No need to shake this cocktail. Uh, this is where, obviously, that glass gets its name from, the Hurricane. That's what that is, the Hurricane cocktail. Super easy, super quick to make. One of the best rum drinks you'll ever taste in your entire life. 50 ml, double bubble, of a decent uh, sort of aged golden rum. 50 ml. And one thing I love about, about these rums, they've got sort of a pourer in the top as well. It's quite helpful, that. Quite useful. So 50 ml of that. Uh, the next ingredient you want is some freshly squeezed lemon juice. And I want 20 ml of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And then we just need uh, two bits of passion fruit. Now, if you want a cheat, uh, you could very easily just use Rubicon passion fruit. Okay, that way, and that's the fizzy one. That way it's a tree, but there's something about this whole thing and it's going for the puree. I just want 25 ml of uh, passion fruit puree in there. And I just want the pulp of half a passion fruit. Now this doesn't look much, but I promise you, one, it's that dilution you get from the ice once you've finished, that's what kind of makes it. Now, I just want a pulp of half a passion fruit. Passion fruit. Need to make a porn star martini now, don't we? Right. Pulp of half a passion fruit. Let's get those seeds in there. And I'm going to use that. Holly, Dave, Claire, stay tuned because I've got a use for that in a bit. You might know what it is. <laughs> I won't spoil the fun just yet. I'll, I'll let all of you know what you did, Dave, the other day. Uh, which did tickle me. Right, that is, uh, that's essentially the cocktail. It doesn't look much at all. But this is a crushed ice one. Uh, traditionally kind of is blended as well, so you could blend that if you really want to. I don't think you need to. Let's just put crushed ice in there for the moment. Give it a good churn. I am the world's most messiest bartender. Good churn. <laughs> Top it up with more crushed ice. Garnish it with passion fruit, maybe a pineapple uh, spear leaf as well. That is very simple, very easy. See, rum drinks, they're so easy, but so super tasty. You cannot, that's just going to put a smile on your face every single time you have that. Amazing. Mm. Oh, so good. Just showcases the rum doesn't get lost at all in that. You've got your lemon juice instead of lime this time. You've got your passion fruit. Oh. Mm. So, so good. Right, let's go back. Let's go back to the chat. Where do we get to? We got there, right. Alex, where do I get my bitters? Master of malt. Um, and I've got I've got them all down here as well. So um, I call, always call them La Fee. Uh, Fee Brothers, uh, Angostura, all that kind of stuff. Um, but Master of Malt. These are a little bit more expensive, um, but they are well, can you see that? Well, well worth it. Just to talk you through some of these bitters. So bitters, I've said it before, but bitters to a bartender are kind of like no, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Uh, bitters to a bartender are kind of like um, chef's salt and pepper. So we use bitters to bring out flavours and add a little bit, uh, sort of an extra dimension to cocktails. So just very, very quickly, aromatic bitters. So kind of Miss Betters Bitters version of Angostura. 
uh, black pepper and cardamom, si uh, ku I can't even say it, sumac kiwi, Mount Fuji, which I did use yesterday. This is gorgeous. White peach, chrysanthemum, burdock, and yuzu. Uh, orange tree bitters, lime leaf, uh, my foamers, which you should all know what my foamers are. Uh, cucumber, smoke and oak, strawberry, and marquan. Marquan is kind of um, a pepper. So you've got sort of green strawberry and pepper. Uh, chocolate bitters, and then that pineapple and star anise. About 20 quid, 22 quid maybe a bottle. They do, they're alcoholic. They're 40? 40%, um, they'll never go off, but they just add pack a punch. They're just amazing for that. So there you go, Alex. Right. Uh, Graham, sudden comfort ideas, please. Steve, got a party next week. Um, the party girl, sudden comfort fan. Uh, what did I do? Uh, what was my last video? Sudden comfort video. It's the apricot one, I think. Apricot smash, maybe. Uh, whatever. I'm not sure if he's watching, actually. Where's my neighbor? Where's Trevor? Is Trevor on? Don't know what time it is. Where is? Uh, we've tre so Alexi. I know you do f phenomenally well, and George, wherever if George is watching as well, name my cocktails. But you guys have got got to catch up with uh, Trevor Rose as well. Trevor is off the scale with naming cocktails. So I don't know what we called it in the end, but it's sun and comfort, apricot jam, bit of mint in there as well, a bit of lemon juice, sugar. I forget what the other one was now. Ah, oh, delicious, absolutely delicious. Go and search back through my YouTube channel. Uh, so that's that one. Claire, I paid 129. Oh, that's answering thingy's question. There we go. 129 for a bottle in the supermarket. Alexi. There was one time I served this cocktail in a tiki mug. Forget my sin. To be honest, mate, I'm, I do I do kind of like serving them in those as well. <laughs> Hunty, hello, Mr. Hunt up in Kings Lynn. How the devil are we? Uh, right, Gosling's. I saw Gosling's Amber Rum on Audi Friday. Do you know what? I've never actually tried the Amber. I, I know the Black Seal. Uh, Black Seal is absolutely delicious. Uh, it's kind of, is it legally? But it's kind of the trademark dark and stormy rum. Um, but I've never actually tried the, um, the, um, the Amber one. So I don't know what that's like. Cool. Uh, right. Jess. Hello, Jess. How the devil are you? And there we go. What's this one? Have you got any Donkey Oak Barrel Spiced Rum? And what do I think of it? Andy, no, I haven't. I've got everything but back there. Um, I can't spin you around. Uh, I've done, I've got about 70 odd spiced rums around there, our flavoured rums. Uh, and that is not one of them, actually. So apologies for that. Right then, what are we doing next? I've done my Patreon shout out. Oh, we're doing the Mai Tai. We are doing my Mai Tai. Um, so the Mai Tai cocktail. I tell you what, I've got five 400 watt. Oh, the lights. There we go. Five 400 watt lights above me. It's in my film studio. And it is flipping boiling. <laughs> it's lovely. We'll, die. we'll have a cold shower after this. So we're going to do the Mai Tai next. The Mai Tai, I'm not going to get into the history of the Mai Tai uh, too much because there's a big long running argument about who actually invented it in sort of either 1933 or 1944 or 40, something like that. Uh, but just kind of think of it as a 1940s-ish uh, cocktail. Kind of a Mai Tai, but with a couple of extra ingredients in there. And a couple of things I've got behind me here, take it to a com using that sort of very similar original recipe, but kind of different brands flipped up, take it to a whole new a whole new level. So um, I'm going to do that. Let's just change that to Mai Tai. Where's my Mai Tai? You'd think this stores them in order. It doesn't. Once you close it down, you prep this on Thursday and then you close it down and it takes them all out of order. There we go. Cocktail free. The Mai Tai. The Mai Tai. Right. I'm going to serve it up in little sort of rocks glass like this. And this is super delicious. If you ever want the ingredients for one cocktail, get the ingredients for a Mai Tai because it is amazing. So essentially a daiquiri with a few extra bits in it. Now, the original kind of recipes um, do get kind of specific about the rum. They do sort of say Jamaican, uh, so half Jamaican, 
and uh, half a uh, rum agricole. I think it was Martinique. Uh, I think that was the original kind of rums used in there. So a Jamaican rum and a, an agricole rum. So you've got three, without getting too much into rum knowledge, because uh, rum aficionados will completely blow me out of the water with rum knowledge. There's essentially three different styles of rum, English, Spanish, and French. Uh, so agricole style, style is um, the French style. It comes from places like Haiti, uh, Guatemala. That's not why I'm thinking of. Martinique, sorry, that's the country I'm thinking of. Um, Haiti, Gu um, Martinique, places like that. Uh, you've got the English style rums that kind of like your Barbados, your, um, um, where's El Dorado come from? Mental block. Uh, <laughs> I've got a mental block on it. Um, and then you've got your sort of Spanish style rums, your um, Cuban sort of style rums as well. So they're all very different kind of profiles around them. So we're going English style Jamaican and a uh, sort of French style traditionally. But I'm going to use uh, Cuban in this, and I'm going to use um, kind of my two, uh, one of my favourite rums and the other one in this bridge. So the first one we're going to rock out is the Old Suave, sherry finished. Absolutely banging this rum. Amazing. Oh, let's get rid of my passion fruit puree. It's quite cheap as well, I think. I think it's about 22, 24 pounds in the UK well worth having a look at it's kind of for all you spiced rum fans as well it's kind of um got that sort of easy to drink vibe to it as well it's proper rum without the sort of spices but it's got that easy kind of drinkable thing so i'm going 25 ml of the sherry finished rum mummy barman is um she's desperate to get live on screen here mummy barman is standing right by the window i think she's desperate to have one of these cocktails that one come on Hey, excuse this. <laughs> Mother God, Barman. It is blooming hot, isn't it? Yeah. You're not going to show your face on camera? No. She's sweating. Oh, She's okay. sweating. She's not even in here. Oh, yeah. Go on, get out. Oh. Go on. <laughs> so, no, that's all right. Close the, close the door. Right. Second rum is going to be the, um, not that one, I'm going to Dorada. So the gold rum. So this is kind of a gold. I think this is four, eight, four years old. So that's a four-year-old rum as well. That's a four-year-old, and that's sort of aged to five-ish. All right. So I've got just this sort of classic gold rum here. So twenty-five mil of that. So that's the fifty mil of my rum. Double bubble of the two rums there. Lovely, jubbly. Right, next ingredient is kind of traditionally sort of uh, a dry orange curacao, uh, which um, for those that haven't really seen a dry orange curacao, I've got a bottle. Where is it? There it is. Uh, bowls do one. It's called dry orange. Uh, so bowls have got that. The equivalent of a famous brand that you've probably heard of is Grand Marnier. Um, so that's a go-to. Pierre Ferrand, um, Sort of the plantation guys as well have got their uh, Pierre Ferrand dry orange curacao, which is absolutely delicious. <laughs> However, my little world got changed upside down about two weeks ago because a friend of mine dropped this into me. Can we see that? Let's hold that up there. This is called Fortunella. Okay. And this is actually, I don't know too much about it, to be honest. Um, it's a little bit on the back, but this is actually a sort of a kumquat orange liqueur. This is so, so good. Absolutely phenomenal, this. So I've got 50 ml of rum. I want 15 ml, one five of this, this sort of orange liqueur. I say, come on, oh, so good. Oh, just over ice, that is amazing. So if you want something to pimp your Grand Marniers up or your Cointreaux or things like that, have a look for that, Fortunella. All right. Now, if you're looking for the recipes, I will do a blog post tomorrow uh, and put all the recipes in there for you as well. So we've got that. Right. We're going lime juice. Is that my lime? Yep. Uh, 20 ml of lime juice. A bit more. And then two more ingredients here. Actually, three, because I'm going to add some bitters. First ingredient is some sugar, just normal sugar syrup, 10 ml. Again, this is where you might need to adjust the taste. You might need a little bit more sugar in there. But the sort of tiki element to that is orgeat. Hands down, the best orgeat on the market by a million miles. And I do love, I've got plenty of Monin stuff there as well. 
Uh, I'm going to use Monin Grenadine in one. I've got Monin Vanilla in another, which is hands down the best vanilla syrup on the market. But I have to say, that Orgy from ODK is amazing. Proper, proper amazing. Love this. And I just want a 10 mil of that as well. Now, Orgit, uh, proper Orgit, is kind of an almond syrup uh, with orange uh, flower water, orange blossom water in there. Um, vanilla notes as well. So good. So good. Right. And actually, for my Mai Tai, I'm just going to add, um, you could use a Demerara sugar as well if you really wanted to. I just use normal sugar. But I'm just going to add a little bit of bitters as well. Just aromatic bitters. Not too much. Probably about half of that. There we go. So again, very kind of daiquiri-esque, but it's just that orgy and the orange liqueur that kind of you add to flip it out from a daiquiri. So we're just going to uh, ice that down now. And then we're gonna give it a good hard shake again. All right, 10 to 12 seconds. It's lovely, jubbly. Right. Right. Now, you could, if you're at home, absolutely no dramas. Just pour that straight in. Not a problem. I'm going to use fresh ice. Just strain that in there. Top out with fresh ice. Maybe even crown it with some crushed ice. There we go. Garnish. Sprig of mint. And I like to go, another one of my secret weapons, uh, dehydrated orange. That's my Mai Tai. So, very, very simple. 50 ml of rum. And I've used those two rums. Um, 15 ml of an orange liqueur. Uh, 20 ml of lime juice. And then you've got 10 ml of orgeat syrup. 10 ml of sugar syrup or demerara sugar syrup and then add some bitters. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The holy grail of rum cocktails. It is. Oh, it's so good. And I'll tell you why it's so good. Because you do get those sherry notes off that rum, but you do get the Fortunella, that sort of vibrant orange kumquat liqueur coming through. With obviously the almond. Oh, wow. Good. Right. I need a little break because it is hot. Who should we chat to now? Who should we chat to? Right. Either, either you've all disappeared or I've got no, no more chats. <laughs> okay. My, um, I don't think my chat is working. Because I'm sure, I'm sure people are commenting. So I'm really, really sorry. I don't know what's going on with that. Let's scroll up to the top. And let's scroll back down. No, it's not showing me any chats. I'll tell you what I might do. I might just go onto my Facebook uh, and see what's going on here. See who we've got. Oh, we're listening here as well. That's there. Let's put YouTube. YouTube. Dun, 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 dun. There must be. If I've lost everyone, then we shall just crack on. Right. Oh, there we go. Right, here we go. We've got more here. See YouTube. Oh, we're all going on YouTube. Here we go. Right. I need to uh, turn the volume down in here. Right. Let's go through these chats. Claire, I paid. Where did we get to? There, 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 there. We got to there. I thought your favourite was the kiss and cuddle sour, Graham. That was uh, well named earlier. Well done. Uh, Bull 1994. What's your recipe suggestions for Long Island iced tea? Long Island iced tea is so simple. It's the five white spirits, equal measures, lemon, sugar, Coke, easy. There's no other 
Uh, there's no other recipe for it, really. Uh, so five whites, so tequila, rum, gin, vodka, what am I missing? Uh, orange, uh, triple sec. Uh, traditionally, half a shot of each. So it's only two and a half shots, but some bars that don't know better will do a shot and give you five shots, which isn't the dumb thing. So it's normally half a shot of your five whites, uh, equal amounts of uh, lemon and sugar, and then uh, topped up with Coke. There we go. That was Bull 1944. I'm gutted. The chat stopped working on here. I can't show you. Can't give you some fame. Um, Krista. Hey, Christopher. How you doing? Uh, finally made it to watch you. My tie looks great. Thank you very much. Chris Jones. Have you ever used John D. Taylor's for learning in a Mai Tai? I don't actually. I prefer, I prefer the sweetness, actually, of the all sheet syrup to, uh, to that in a Mai Tai. Um, I could add a little bit more sugar, but that isn't that sweet for me. So I do love the all sheet. The all sheet works uh, for me personally. But yes, I hear you. I hear you, Chris Jones. I definitely do. Um, hey, Lucas, how you doing? Notice no pineapple juice in the uh, in the Mai Tai. No, there is no pineapple juice in a Mai Tai. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry to be the bearer of that bad news. There is, if you go to places like TGI Fridays and Vodka Revs or Rev Revolution Rum Bars or whatever it calls, but traditionally, no, a Mai Tai do, does not have uh, pineapple juice in it. Um, so, no, it's not my flip. That's the proper. That's a proper Mai Tai. Uh, George, here he is. Hello, George, all the way from Mexico. Uh, Kaz Cabal, is that how you say it? I think that rum, that tequila is steadily making its way f towards me. Kaz Cabal, Kaz Cable, Kaz Cabal, uh, tequila is sold everywhere but Mexico. <laughs> Probably says not too much about the brand, but I, hope, I think I've got some rums, uh, rums, to, um, some tequilas coming my way. Honey tequila, I'm looking forward to trying it anyway. Drew, uh, do you have an ice cube maker? No, I buy it in Drew. Uh, it's just easy for me to buy in. I've got a really cool ice man that delivers cubes and crush to me. Um, Graham, what is the drink behind your left elbow along from the Aperol? Oh, oh, <laughs> Graham, this is quite funny. So this is uh, Greek uh, spirit, Mastia, and it's the, made by Greece's first ever female distiller. Uh, Mastia is a, a category, so I think vodka, uh, but Mastia, so Mastia is a, a, a category in its own right. And this, so I'll read the back to you, because uh, I'd never ever tried it before it got uh, delivered to me. Where is it? Uh, it says something really funny that made me kind of think, really? I don't want to try that. Where does it say it? So let, let's just sort of talk through it. Right, Mastia is a spirit, floral bouquet. But floral bouquet with aromas of eucalyptus, tasting notes of cucumber, mint, sweet tea, and an undeniable freshness. Here we go. Which prompted the quote, I feel like I'm drinking a spa. Now, when I opened this, it's a really sexy bottle, really proper sexy bottle. When I smelt it, I was like, oh, I am not touching that. That is absolutely horrific. And it really does like smell like a chemically spa. But I thought, do you know what? I'll give it a go. Add a little bit in a glass with some ice. And it is absolutely delicious. It tastes nothing uh, how it smells like. It is so good. I'm going to do a few cocktail videos with it. I might even, in about a month's time, I might even dedicate one of these live streams to it. Oh, but smell. Don't let the smell put you off because oh, it's gorgeous. So that's Cleos. That way, K-L-E-O-S, Cleos. And it's basically a Mastia from Greece. So that is that. That was Graham. Was that Graham? If I remember rightly. Graham, yes. Uh, oh, two along from the Aperol. I went one along. <laughs> two along is, is that one. Or which way are you going? Are you going Sue's? Or are you going, sorry, Graham. I failed miserably there, didn't I? Um, so Sue's is just kind of uh, a white, dumb it down, a white Campari, essentially. It's kind of gentian, um, sort of uh, very kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? What's Campari? Um, I'm, not, I'm losing the plot in here. It's like a mental block. It's kind of like a bitter aperitif. That's the word uh, I'm looking for. So kind of gentian based in there, just very, very bitter. Think white uh, aperitif. Uh, and if you're going the other way, 
that's I love I do love my Cornish brands. Uh, think Perno, but Cornwall. <laughs> so that's Tarquin's uh, Cornish pastis. So I kind of use it a, a little bit. I don't use too much, but it kind of goes in my atomizer sprays um, for finishing off some sort of tiki cocktails and things like that. So yeah, you got the rundown of Cleos, which you weren't even interested in. <laughs> and those two. So Graham, I hope that's answered your question there. I think that's I think that's all the questions on YouTube. Trying to make a long hour so soon. I don't know why the comments, I'm gutted the comments are not working on there. Never mind, never mind. Right, let's get on to where do we get to? We got to uh, we did the Mai Tai, we're going for the rum punch now. Uh, I love talking about rum punches. So I've got three more cocktails to do for you. Three more. Mm. Right. While I'm washing this down, rum punch. There is no set recipe for a rum punch. Rum punch is all about the formula. And when you remember the formula, you can make any kind of rum punch that you like, all right? It's just so simple. And the formula is this, and I've said it many times, uh, one part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong, four parts weak, then a dash of spice to make it nice. That is all you need to remember to make a very tasty rum punch. As long as you follow that formula, you can use any ingredients that you want to, um, and just make up your own rum punches. Now, there's some famous recipes out there, like the reggae rum punch uh, and things like that. But I'm going to show you traditional old school with one kind of ingredient flipped. That's what I'm going to go for. So I've just got four ingredients for this. You could have five, including the, the, the finishing touches. Uh, and this Dave, Holly, and uh, Claire, this is where you need to pay attention because... Uh, we're going to set fire to some stuff at the end. So that is the garnish uh, for this. All right. So I'm going to uh, serve it up in my tiki glass. I would use them. But I think there might be some spiders in them. Uh, so I'm going to serve it up in that. It's kind of a rough and ready co um, cocktail. Kind of gets served up in big uh, fish tanks and goldfish bowls and all that sort of stuff as well. Jugs. But it is, it's that formula. So one part, I'll say it again, one part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong four parts weak, then a dash of spice to make it nice. All right. So simple, basic rum punch, the earliest of rum punches. Bear in mind, you've got to go back 1700s, 1800s, where they didn't have orange juice. They didn't have pineapple juice. They didn't have grapefruit juice. They didn't have all these weird and wonderful uh, ingredients that we've got now. Guavas, passion fruits, mangoes, all that kind of stuff. It was very, very basic. So my one part sour, uh, I'm going lime juice and I'm going 15 mil. So when I'm talking parts, if you're trying to get your head around uh, for the complete novices, when I'm talking parts, kind of see your vessel, your glass, your fish tank is 10 parts. All right. So see that is 10. So that would obviously be five. Uh, that would be two and a half. And then you've got one under there. In, in terms of shot relation, if you know what sort of volume of cocktail you're making, uh, that's when you can break it down into the shots. So I'm going mil. All right, so I'm going 15 mil, one five mil of lime juice. So this is my sour. All right, 15 mil of sour. So that's my one part sour. My next ingredient is my sweet. Now for this, I'm going very traditional and I'm going brown sugar. All right, so just brown sugar syrup. Make it yourself, absolutely easy. Just use that. Um, boil it up with hot water and it'll keep for weeks as well. But I, it's just easier for me just to buy it in as well. So, and this, and I'm going 30 mil, all right? Three zero. There we go. Also, I need to, I haven't spoken about this measure for ages as well. I need to get a plug in for this. Um, a lot of these cocktails, you notice they're not 15 mil or they're not 25 and 50 mil. They are random sort of 15, 15 mils, 5 mils, 10 mils, 30 mils. This is my Mezcla Precisio. Uh, and I'll hold it there. You should see it now. Can you see that? It's all lined in the middle. So we've got 50 mil and a 25 mil. Uh, the 50 mil is lined every, that angle, every 10 mil. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 40 in the bottom there. And then in the 25 mil, we've got every five mil. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Um, so super accurate in cocktails, especially when it's all about ratios. 
All right. When you just add a glug of this and a glug of that, you don't really balance the cocktails well. And that's what cocktails are all about. They're not necessarily about volume. They're just about balancing those flavors, especially to kind of take you. Right, back to it. One part sour, two parts sweet, 30 ml of Demerara. Four parts, uh, three parts is your strong. Uh, which should we go for? We're going for the Añejo for this. Uh, so obviously we're now going 45 ml. So if one part is 15 ml, I want three parts. So 45 ml of um, your decent rum. 45. Boom. And then um, your final ingredient is your weak for this. So that was your strong. So you've got four parts weak. Now, in old school days, it was water. It was just good old water. And I must admit, I love water in a rum punch like that. There is something so tasty about it because the rum shines and um, the sort of the sugar brings that flavor out of it. However, just for a bit of quirkiness, I'm going coconut. You never put labels on straight. There we go. So you think... I would think naturally that's the back for me, but it's not. There we go. Uh, it's just, there's no right or wrong to coconut water brands. This is just a brand I use. I found it in a supermarket. It's quite good. It's actually got chunks of coconut in this one. Um, so I kind of like it. Really do like it. Freaked me out the first time. I thought it gone off with the little white bits in there. And then I read it, it had bits in it. So, right. So four parts. So four times 15, 60 mil, six zero of coconut water. And then just 10. There we go. Now, I'm not adding the spice yet because the dash of spice to make it nice is coming right at the end. Holly, Dave, Claire. And Holly's, Holly's Hubster, if you're watching as well. You must be. I bet you're watching. Right. That is essentially the cocktail. Okay, so I'm going to ice that up. Lots and lots of ice. There we go. And we're just going to shake this down. Again, good hard shake, 10, 12 seconds. Have we got more comments coming through? Yep. Right, there we go. Just got, I'm just gonna pour this in there and I'm gonna top up with a bit more ice as well. And crown it with some crushed. Lovely, jubbly. Right. Now, you'll notice there's no spice yet. Let's just have a little try of this. Oh. <laughs> That's so good. So good. Right. The spice. Uh, you could use bitters. Absolutely not a problem. Bitters would work exceptionally well. However, we want a bit of theatre. We want a bit of theatre. So I'm going to put that to one side. Yes, Dave, I'm going to show you how to set fire to stuff properly without using WD-40. <laughs> right. Um, I've got two things here. It's kind of a spent lime. Uh, so from my lime juice, I've got lots of spent limes in here. And just keep them for garnishes. Uh, so they work quite well, or I've got passion fruit. So I'm going to actually use the lime for this. Uh, so we've got lime in there. Now we want, um, so that's our kind of receptacle to hold the flames. We want the fuel, all right? So the first thing we want is some sugar. This is the fuel to keep the flame uh, going. So I'm just going to add kind of a spoon of sugar to my lime. I'm just going to eat that then. Sugar ice? No, we won't do that. We won't do that. Now I want um, even more fuel. Now, some people will use a decent overproof rum like that and set fire to it. Me, I'm a tight ass. I use lemon extract. You get this in most supermarkets. It's the most flammable thing you'll ever find, apart from WD-40. You just need to add... A little bit over the sugar, just soak the sugar. There we go, soak the sugar in there. Now, what you should find, hopefully, is if I just, oh, 
Oh, there we go. Pull the straw out of the way. That is now going. So that is part one. Look at that. That's a flaming half, isn't it? And then... I'm going to set fire to my studio lights. If, if the live goes dead in a minute, I've got a fire. We've got some cinnamon. There we go. I won't do too much. There we go. And that is how you set fire to cocktails with that kind of tiki element going onto it. And that will just happily burn away there. The sugar is caramelizing as well. You've got a lovely sort of dust in the cinnamon over the top. And if you try and drink it now, you'll, you'll just burn it. But just to get that back, just lemon extract. So I know some people will be asking what that is. Lemon extract. There we go. Get it, Amazon. Next day delivery, UK. Right. <laughs> Dave, there he is. Fire, fire, fire. Holly. <laughs> See, isn't that better than WD-40? <laughs> Lovely, jubbly. I'm just going to put that to one side just to see how, how long that will burn for. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep that burning there. So there we have it. That's essentially rum punch. One part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong, four parts weak, and a dash of spice to make it nice. Flip all those ingredients up. Citrus, your, your sour, you can go lemon, lime, grapefruit, uh, your sweet, whole plethora of syrups. Um, let's just run through them. Sugar, orgy, grenadine, hazelnut, vanilla, honey, uh, maple, cinnamon, elderflower, maple, uh, gin, said it, ginger, guava, chili, valernum, salted caramel, custard, marshmallow. They're all the flavors I've got there. Purees for the sweet as well. Your, your strong, any rum you like, your weak, again, you can use coconut, you can use plain water, you can use juices like orange, pineapple, cranberry, you go crazy, tropical juices, all that kind of stuff, um, lemonade, ting, lilt, whatever you fancy, just don't go over those ratios. One part sour, settle, two parts sweet, three parts strong, four parts weak, four, four, part, four parts weak. <laughs> You got the idea. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Right. I don't think. No, much. Oh, the chat's come back. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yes. Christopher looks good. Want one, Claire? That fire is good. It's Sicilian lemon extract, the same as lemon extract. I would guess so, Claire. I've just assumed that it comes from Sicily as opposed to Bristol. <laughs> Oh, product to the USA. Um, so I would guess so. I don't know. Try it, but it should be flammable. It should be pretty damn flammable. And it's still going. Just remember, you need something to hold it. It's gone. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's still there. Just remember, you need something to hold, hold it. So a spent lime wedge, passion fruit, something like that. Uh, you need your fuel, which is sugar. So brown sugar. Brown sugar works a treat for this. Uh, and then you just want your accelerant. So you could go Rain Rare Nephew is a big favorite, fan fa fan favorite, 69, 70% spice rum, uh, white rum, sorry. Uh, Rain Nephew is the popular. It's just quite expensive. Why would you use uh, rum when you can use lemon extract, which costs like four pounds a bottle and will last ages? It's nearly gone now, nearly gone. Lovely, jubbly. Right, the next cocktail. Jess, I'm in the middle of a dry week. Jess, crack on, Jess, crack on. It didn't work. Oh, Claire, are you making it there and then? With, thanks, Steve, you're the man going to try it again tomorrow. Okay, so I take it you tried to make it there and then. Awesome, right, captions. Uh, we've done that. The next one should be the Newey Newey, if I remember rightly. Newey Newey, are we doing that? I've been waffling for an hour already, ain't I? See, I like to waffle. I knew these wouldn't last an hour. Right, the Newey Newey. Two more cocktails to do. Oh, still loving that Mai Tai. Right. Let's just rinse the hands. Bit of cinnamon. Bit of that. The Newey Newey. Newey Newey virtually translates as big, I think. Bold? Big. Big. I'm sure it's big. Um... And that's kind of what it means. It's, um, I forget when it was invented, I wrote it down. 
Yeah, I did. Uh, Don Beach. Don Beach invented this in 1937. And this is kind of very much a tiki cocktail, okay? So the first sort of few I've done, uh, the Mai Tai is kind of loosely regarded Polynesian sort of tiki cocktail. This one very much is, all right? Um, so I'm going to get into the Nui Nui. Is we're going to serve it up in, what are we going to serve it up in? We're going to serve it up in that rocks glass, I think. Is that gone? Can we get it off screen? Yeah, we get it off screen now. If it wasn't hot enough in here already, it, it flipping well is now. Right. Here we go. So we're going to serve it up in um, rocks glass. I need to, let's get a fresh one. Going to make it in a cocktail shaker, as always. The rums from this, what am I going to use? I'm using my Cuban El Madurada. That's what I'm using for this. Right. Gold rum. We're going back to gold rum. I've in the past, I've used El Dorado eight year old. That was kind of my go to for that, kind of like a Demerara rum. But I have tried it with other gold rums, and I think it does quite quite well with this. So um, I'm going 50 mil, 50 mil double bubble of decent gold rum. Second ingredient I'm going for, I'm not sure whether this was the original one, but it's certainly in my recipe. Liquor 43, liquor 43, flipping. I love this liqueur. So good. Basically a herbal liqueur, massive vanilla notes. Uh, superb. So I just want 15 mil of a liquor 43. I've got another kind of tiki ingredient coming up um, to show you as well. This is very, very big in tiki cocktails. Where is it? Pimento dram. It's kind of like a, an all spice, all spice liqueur. See that? bit blurred. There we go. So think all spice, think quite luscious, vibrant. I'm just going five mil. All right. Oh, you can smell like the cloves, the all spice, the cinnamon. Oh, that is so good. I couldn't, I, I wouldn't drink it neat, but certainly in cocktails, in five mil. If you added a shot of that in there, you would kill the cocktail. It's all, it's what I say. These cocktails are all about balance, they're all about flavors. All right. So, uh, and then just want some cinnamon syrup. Again, uh, just the brand. There we go. Um, I just want 10 mil of cinnamon syrup. In there. And what am I missing? I'm missing my lime, aren't I? Lime and orange. Yes. There we go. Right. Lime juice. Uh, 20 mil. Uh, freshly squeezed orange juice. Proper freshly squeezed with bits in it. I did that the other day. Lovely, jubbly. Uh, and 20 mil again of this. It's just something about freshly squeezed juices, especially in tiki cocktails. They just work a treat. And the final ingredient is some bitters. Angostura bitters if you if you want, but I'm using Miss Betters bitters, my aromatic. Uh, and I just want sort of that much, quarter to a third of a pet pipette. Now, that is essentially it for the Nui Nui. Uh, again, it's a rocks glass, so I'm going to ice it up, shake it down, give it some welly. None of this uh, limp-wristed uh, shaking malarkey going on. You properly need to give it some welly, all right? Hard, fast shake. Jabbly, jabbly. Sweetness. Oh, banging. Banging. Right. Fresh ice. This. The notes. Just off that little sip. You get the cinnamon. You get allspice. You get the rum. You get those sort of tropical notes from the orange coming off. I tell you what, I think having made it with El Dorado, um, the eight year old sort of a Demerara rum, I think using a slightly lighter style of rum, golden rum, I think that does actually make um, the, the kind of the cinnamon, the allspice come off that a little bit better. Oh, that's so good. Proper depth of flavour that.
Love that. Love that. Still love my Mai Tai. Mai Tai is without a shadow of a doubt. But the allspice, that pimento, pimento dram in there, sort of just along with the rum and the, the orange. Mm. So, so good. Not overly sweet either. Perfect. Right. The final cocktail. The final, final cocktail. Let's just have a look, see what else is going on there. Uh, Alex. No. <laughs> My bottle is empty, mate. Empty. No sound, look, it's empty. Um, honestly, I didn't really enjoy... I didn't really enjoy the hemp too much, mate. I, I, I didn't get it. I think that was that was kind of it. I didn't get what they were trying to do, jump on this whole cannabis hemp trend, and it kind of never worked out, and they made a big deal of it, but they're not making a big deal out of it anymore. Look, Dead Man's Fingers, they're not the best rums in the world by a million, million miles, but do they bring out amazing flavours? Like, I, I did a raspberry uh, Mai Tai filmed yesterday to come out next week on my YouTube channel. Superb, honestly, really, really is good. So, uh, no, I haven't got any hemp cocktails as such. Jess, yes, you do, Jess. This is absolutely amazing. Liquor forty three. I can't, I can't even begin to uh, begin to pronounce it properly. Quante tres. I'm just, that's, that obviously means forty three in Spanish, doesn't it? But quante quante tres, something like that. I've just upset a whole load of Spanish people now. Uh, so, yes, Jess, uh, amazing stuff. This absolutely amazing. 12, 14 quid a bowl. Right, Christopher. Liquor 432. Yes. Neat coffees. Who's this? Sina. Yeah. I've only ever seen people have liquor 43 with milk. Never in a cocktail. Oh, watch my, watch my channel. There's a few cocktails on there, I tell you. There's a few. Right. Oh, well, oh, hello. All the, all the comments are coming through now. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, Dave. Mini beers with liquor 43. Oh, mini beers. Liquor. Oh, yeah. Um, mini beers. <laughs> I, I guess that's a family tradition. Uh, for those of you that are watching on YouTube and haven't gotten on, uh, dad, daughter, <laughs> mum. <laughs> Oh, of liquor 43 in a sangria. Yes. Right, let's get on to the final cocktail because this is a showstopper and a half, this one. Uh, love this. This is the Rum Runner. <coughs> Lots of different flavours in this one. Fun and fruity. Possibly the fruitiest cocktail you'll ever have. So good, so tasty. Just wash that. The temperature's dropping now. Either I've become immune to it or the temperature's dropping massively now. Might might need a duvet tonight to go to sleep. <laughs> right. How's that going on? Let's get rid of that. Lovely, jubbly. Right, the rum runner. Don't know the history behind this, I'll be honest. Uh, it's kind of... Uh, uh, I know it was invented sort of around the 50s and it comes actually from uh, the Florida Keys and not this Caribbean. But apart from that, I don't really know too much about it. So let's uh, let's crack on with this one. Uh, the rums. What rum did I say I was going to use? Going back to the tiki lovers. 25 mil of this. So I've got this. Uh, just a reminder again, it's a blend of Barbados, Dominican Republic, Guatemala, Nicaragua and Panama rums. Uh, it's a lovely blend that. Uh, it's supposed to be the best uh, daiquiri rum. And I, I tell you, it does make flipping good daiquiris. Mm. Right. 25 mil of that. I want to go back to the Añejo. 25 mil of Añejo. It just means aged. So a decent aged rum. Four or five gold, four or five year old gold rum. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Right, I've completely forgotten where I am now. Blackberry and banana liqueurs, yes. 20 mil each of these. 10 mil, 20 mil, 20 mil each of these. Blackberry liqueur, creme de mule, 20 mil. 
and brands, I normally try and stick to bowls, but I've just got a little bit of the Kuiper left, all right? So there's no right or wrong. Rumor has it that some of these come out, even come out of the same factory. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't know. I know bowls make bowls. I know the Kuiper make the Kuiper. Um, but when you get a few other brands, I think, I think they might come out of similar factories. Distilleries, production lines. So 20 mil of blackberry liqueur, 20 mil of banana liqueur. Uh, I've got five mil of grenadine coming up now. So we want our red, vibrant red grenadine, just five mil in there. Uh, I need some pineapple juice and some orange juice. I know that much. Yep. Um, and I want some lime juice as well. 20 mil of lime juice. It's not a cocktail. I make that often, this. Uh, it used to be years ago, but I've just completely, because I haven't made it for years, I've just completely forgotten it. So 20 mil of lime juice, and then the final two ingredients, 30 mil of um, uh, freshly squeezed orange juice, and then 30 mil of pressed pineapple juice. I would love a juicer, a juice extractor. That's what I'd love to get, proper fresh pineapple juice. Uh, so this is just supermarket stuff, but properly pressed, pressed and squeezed. So run you through those ingredients again. 50 mil of your rum, excuse me, 25 mil, 25 mil. Uh, 20 mil of banana liqueur, 20 mil of blackberry liqueur, 20 mil of lime juice, and five mil of grenadine, 30 mil of pineapple juice, and 30 mil of orange juice. All right, lovely, jubbly. I don't think many of you will need much more sweetness to that. No, oh, perfect. Right, I'm going to serve this up in this kind of tiki rocks glass. That's where it's going to get served up in. Oh, let's, uh, this keeps highlighting loads of different chats coming through. I just, I'll just come back to my chat in a second. Uh, there we go, the run runner, that's what it's called. Right, ice that down. Look at that, lovely jubbly, right. Hard and fast shake, my final shake of the evening. And we've been going, oh my God, an hour and 20 minutes. Amazing. Oh, amazing, amazing. I'm just going to pour that straight in there. Top it up with crushed ice. Garnish with another pineapple. And that's there. And then serve it up with a straw. And that is the rum runner. Oh, oh I just want to be on a beach bar somewhere. I, I would have the hurricane, but certainly someone's stolen the hurricane. And uh, that's my rum punch. Amazing. My daiquiri is still there as well. There we have it. All right, let's have a final dip into the, the chat. Thank you so much, you guys, for staying on. An hour and 20, 20 minutes. Jesus. Right. Where do we get to? Uh, you will sleep easy after drinking all them. I'm flipping wine. <laughs> Sugar highs. Uh, Holly. Sorry, Claire. Holly, I'm going to get a bottle of Tiki Lovers Rum. Do it. Use my affiliate links. <laughs> Who's this? Mr. Daiquiri, thank you. Oh, Mr. Daiquiri. Hello, Mr. Daiquiri. Thank you, Steve, for a great cocktail tonight. That is the lover's rum. It was blended specifically to make delicious daiquiris. I wonder who that is. I wonder who that is. Mate, it's a cracking rum, I have to say. Really, really good rum. Need more of a play about with that, but honestly, love it. Really, really good rum. Lover's rum represents blah, blah, blah. Honestly, yes, awesome. So there we have it, Mr. Daiquiri. Uh, Jess, it's been a great live, delicious cocktails. Thank you. Amy, you're still here. That rum runner looks right up my street. It properly is, I tell you. Mm. So good. Matthew, Mark, M. Uh, amazing. Who we got here? Graham. Thanks, Steve. 
You are welcome, my friend. Thank you so much. Honestly, guys, thank you. An hour and 20 minutes. Gee, I've just been congratulated here by my software for a great live stream with over 100 people watching. Wow. That's awesome, isn't it? 100 people. Wow. I don't know how, I don't know how many was on what platform. So I've gone live to YouTube, live to my Facebook profile, personal, and then live to my Facebook business page. So awesome. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. Next week, I actually don't know if I was, because my plans changed sort of midway through this week, to be fair. I was going to sort of bring you a bit of that as well, but then I kept thinking of other rum cocktails I wanted to do. So I kind of want to get involved in that. Uh, honestly, send me DMs, send me messages, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you can't, YouTube needs a DM sort of function uh, or comments on this and we'll do whatever. I'll come up with something on Tuesday or Wednesday uh, next week. Um, but in the meantime, if you love this, you know, use my my way of supporting, uh, use my affiliate links to buy stuff that will help me keep the lights on and all that stuff. It does get you discount, unfortunately, but it does help me a little way. And then um, my Patreon as well. I'll put my, I'll put my Patreon on the screen. That is going to be buzzing. It's a long-term project. It's uh, I don't expect like a thousand people in there ever, or maybe 50 in a few years time. But that's my ongoing problem, my ongoing sort of thing. Oh, there's Brian. Hello, Brian. How are you, mate? Thank you very much. What's that? I'm not that into rum, but I saw. I tell you what, Christopher, as a Patreon member, you can pick and you tuned in. You can pick what pro product, is that the right word? What brand, what theme I do next week. That is all on you, Christopher. I need an answer by Tuesday. All right. So, Christopher, as a Patreon member, you get to choose what I'm covering next week, uh, unless I don't like it. <laughs> and if I do like it, brilliant. Uh, Sunday will never be the same again. Right, I've, oh, I can't believe it, an hour and 20 minutes. I can waffle for Great Britain, can't I? Um, if you're watching me on Facebook still, I very much doubt. And if you are, please go and check me out on my YouTube channel. I upload videos at least five days a week. Um, so they'd normally come out at 10 30 in the morning just to sort of hit um the east. Because I get quite a few people watching me in India and um Eastern Europe and that sort of stuff. So I upload them then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays at 10 30 in the morning. Um, and then I do this live on Sunday nights. That's my theme going forward. Um, and that's just me. I'm gonna sign out. Have a look at my Patreon. It's five pounds a month. Thank you. Honestly, guys, it's been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for all you guys tuning in. And I will, where is your link for the run? run? <laughs> Claire, I'll sort you out. I'll sort you, <laughs> I'll sort you out. Don't worry. We'll get there. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Jess, thank you. Ross, thank you very much. Uh, and that is it. Dave, lovely jubbly. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you soon. I'm going for a long, cold, ice cold shower. <laughs>